Thank you, Madam Chairman, and thank you, Mr. Secretary, for being with us today. Um, uh, now that the federal government owns and is running health care, uh, we're encountering disastrous problems throughout the country. Um, we're losing providers because of the oppressive policies of HHS and CMS. Patients are compromised by complicating rules, complicated rules requiring prior approvals and limits on care and rehabilitation. Uh, it's not free market and it's not free patients. It's, it's all governed by this, uh, this branch of the government. Uh, you know, we're spending $4 trillion in this country on health care, $1.6 trillion in taxpayer dollars on health care in this country. Uh, when Medicare became law, three people were paying for each one Medicare recipient. Today, one American is paying for every three Medicare recipients. Uh, we've had some uh, difficult policy uh, made uh, in the last 80 years in health care, uh, and it's a runaway train. Uh, I have asked you this question every time you've come to this, uh, and, and I served on the Healthy Future uh, Task Force, and uh, I couldn't get an answer there either. But, you know, I keep asking, you know, where are all the dollars going? Who is getting them? Is it the federal agencies? You know, the providers, you know, their incomes are decreasing, as I understand it. Practices, hospitals are consolidating because of this problem, creating a problem everywhere. And I've asked you that question, have y'all figured it out over there? Uh, can you give me a breakdown of where every federal and, and, and paid uh, dollar goes uh, for health care? Well, here's the interesting thing, Congressman. I can tell you where the federal dollars go because we keep an accounting of it. I can't tell you where the private sector dollar goes. You mentioned prior authorization. That has nothing to do with the federal government. Prior authorization is something that the insurance companies came up with to try to keep providers from being able to offer the services that they believe are necessary. Uh, we, don't, we can't get in that space because that's done by a private entity, that private business. I would tell you that the, re the answer to your question, where are those dollars going? It's the middlemen. You, we've heard about uh, all the money that's going into the PBMs. The uh, PBMs are the ones that are essentially the go-betweens between pharmaceutical companies and the pharmacies and the dispensing. In between the pharmaceutical companies and the pharmacies, a whole <coughs> bunch of money not, not is in that system. Not, I've, I've got limited time here, but realize the insurance companies are, are, are basically in, in bed with the federal government. I mean, the, the federal government is I, running healthcare. I never healthcare see them in my, in next to my country. pillow. I'll tell you that. Uh, you know, Democrats passed a partisan bloated inflation reduction act, and the drug price setting provisions in this bill make developing treatments even more difficult by not allowing the cost of the development to be recouped, especially for small mo uh, molecule products. Uh, Due to these differing timelines, there's concern in the medical community that the law does not provide enough time for small molecule manufacturers to recoup research and development costs. Could you tell me yes or no, will HHS address the differing timelines between small and large mo mo molecule drugs to ensure it does not increase the cost of drugs for patients and does not disincentivize the innovation of drugs in the future? Now, if you're speaking about the negotiation program that we're engaged in with drug companies, we cannot uh, seek to negotiate the prices of some of those uh, drugs that you just mentioned until they've been on the market for many, many years. And so, so yes, you are. A, so we, a, we have taken that into account. Okay. Innovation, we take into account All what right. they charge, or what they say they invest in research and development okay. in any price negotiation. So All right. yes they, is what I needed to hear. Back in February, the National Association of Attorneys General sent a letter to congressional leaders on behalf of a bipartisan group of 39 attorneys generals including Georgia's AG, Chris Carr, urging action on pharmacy benefit manager practices. This letter outlines several PBM practices, such as spread pricing, tying their own compensation to the list price of medicine that are increasing cost of millions of patients, employers, and community pharmacies, not only in my state, but across the country. Uh, since you've mentioned on record that HHS is currently enforcing the drug price transp transparency rule, I'm assuming that you also agree something needs to be done to protect patients and stakeholders from such practices. As I mentioned, PBMs, uh, we would all like to do more. That, that would be a yes? 
So we, we'd all, all like to see you do more when it comes to PBMs. Okay, I have a few more questions. I'll submit those for the record. My, I'm out of time and I'll yield back.